This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. And I want to talk about Inga, the ice cream bean. We have four different types of trees. The only one I'm totally sure of is Inga spectabilis is because I got that from Fruit Lovers Nursery and I trust him. And then I bought some from a different source from Hawaii and some seeds and they look exactly like the trees I got from Fruit Lovers, the seeds. So this is a nursery grown tree. They're actually very stunning looking trees when in bloom like this. Kind of like an albizia, I guess. And it's this is the first time I noticed uh, pollinators on it. I see, I'm gonna try to get some. So this tree came from the nursery and it's been in the ground here for more than five years and it was in a like a three gallon and then I have planted one ten years ago that was in a three gallon that I also brought from from uh, Plantagram and it started fruiting after about six years. Once it gets some size to it. This one's been flowering for two, three, this is the third year. And I was out here earlier and there was hummingbird moths on it and different types of bees and wasps. I see some honeybees on it now I'll try to get pictures of, but um, there it is. I'd never seen pollinators on this before. So the ice cream bean being pollinated by the honeybee. And I also saw hummingbird moths and I think two other types of bees. So we have like, I don't know, I've counted at least more than 10 different types of bees. And that's not including the wasps, which there's a lot of them. I guess there's some flies. Maybe the flies are pollinating too. So that's good because I've tasted uh, two different types of ice cream beans and um, there's a big difference. The first one I tasted I bought from a source in I think Palm Beach and I didn't like them. I was disappointed. Hopefully this one is not that variety. Uh, we'll find out but um, the second one I tasted was from the fruiting tree that I planted 10 years ago from Plantagram and I since sold that property. Um, but they said it's been fruiting for like four years, so five years. So it takes like six years from a nursery grown tree and I believe they grow organically. I know they do. They're just not organic certified. And they are strict organic people, not weekend organic people. There, there's only one true way of organics and it's to be totally committed to it. And uh, like we are, and so this is growing in this wild, this is the stuff you don't have to plant. It's the stuff that isn't talked about. The plants that grow by themselves that nature puts there are the plants you need. I keep repeating that, but it's really hard to get out why, and um, it's just so complicated, the whole process, and um, I don't really present it well. So we're gonna go to, uh, I wanna show you the ice cream beans, two of them that I started from seed, and from the same source, and uh, from Oscar, Fruit Lovers Nursery, and I planted them last year. So in 2020, I planted them, spring of 2020. You know how I plant. I plant, I start seeds in our biodynamic compost. It's an age static pile compost. And then I, and then I plant them within like two months. 
preferably like less than a month, the seedlings. Some seeds I plant directly in the ground, like the achacha, the largest, larger fruiting stuff, like the giant mulche, the achacha, uh, the black zapote, the cashew. I plant just seed into the ground. But my ingas, I want to, because I've had some batches of seeded ingas that completely died. And I believe they were from the, well, I think it's because they were those seeds that, of the fruit I didn't like. <clears throat> but here's two of the ingus spectabilis that are, you know, in the ground less than a year, or like a year, I guess is what it is. A little more than a year, a year and a couple months maybe. And they're doing very good. And they don't get watered, you don't have to water them. Inga doesn't like to be in pots because of its huge long taproot. It does okay in pots, but it sends down a taproot. The only thing I know that doesn't like being in the pots worse than Inga is the cashew. Cashew hates being in a pot. Just, it doesn't like it. So you gotta plant that one in the ground. But so those are two of those Ingas that are in the same, they're the, in the same crop of trees that I tested two pots that I start my seeds in multiple uh, fruit trees in the same pot. It's getting pretty here. It's hotter than hell, though. Um, so I st start them all in the same pot, like uh, Garcinia dulces and uh, Talisia floresii and Inga spectabilis in the same pot. And like nine, ten seeds. And um, that's three of each. And then I plant them. I plant the whole pot. I did take out two of the ice cream bean and that's what you see over there. We're taken from these pots. But this this pot was planted, this, this tree was planted the same time as that other, those other two. And the only thing kinda I did differently is planted in a worse area. And, because this was all flood zone. And, but I left the Garcinia dulcis in the pot. And these Garcinia dulces are basically a foot tall and less than a year or a year and three months from seed. And I've, we grow lots of Garcinia dulces from different varieties all over the place. And none of our other seeds have ever grown this fast. So what is not done and what is not studied, the stuff that grows by itself, which I imagine this more mimics a cluster of seed-grown trees in nature, is the stuff that's needed. Forget your plant list, set it aside and plant that stuff, but leave what is wild there and stay off of it. So this is the Inga spectabilis that was planted in the same time as the other two. And then, cause this is a much worse area than where those other two were. So this Inga spectabilis over here is from the same pot, but I removed it from all this weed stuff I like to see. Um, cause it seems to have cured the compaction that was still in our soil right here in this lawn. So this was removed from that pot. And it's uh, only, I mean, the Garcinia dulces are almost as big as that. It's important when you plant seeds to plant a bunch. That's why you buy seeds, because they're cheaper. And you will get stuff you can graft onto or other things. But if you just have to kind of keep throwing seeds at a, at a place. It's just how it goes. And obviously 
if you plant them all in the same pot and plant the pot together in a biological system like this, they do quite well. I'll show you another example of uh, uh, Inga spectabilis and Garcinia intermedia planted in the same pot and planted together in one hole. So this is another one of our uh, Inga's ice cream beans. And uh, this one is a different type. And I'm totally unsure what this one is. This one has not flowered. But it seems like it's getting enough size where it could produce some fruit because it's quite big. And this was a nursery bought tree also. So the nursery bought trees that I have here, the big ones, were the ones that were planted first. So, the, you know, the first year. Year one here at Frog Valley Farm, because we've only been here five years. And it was just a monocrop lawn for 60 years, with a horse pasture in the back. And it's so much prettier now than the lawn. I mean, it's like, we gotta start paying attention, paying attention to uh, the stuff that nature grows and uh, just discarding it all, discounting it, not even mentioning it is, kind of the definition of colonial gardening, I think. And that's what we're lacking. We're lacking the, the indigenous, the wild, in all our studies and all our growing methods here in Florida. And I know I sound a little weird sometimes and I thought about not doing these videos, but it's only because I'm trying to tell people that this is all like, it all works together in one system and the, the, the information, the proof is out there. And this is proof. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to keep doing these videos every day and one a day and try to stay sane while I do it. But I don't edit the videos so they come out a little strange sometimes. I should probably delete those, but Oh well, uh, this uh, cacao is, I'm sure, gonna produce fruit this year. I mean, I see the little bugs. It's bug season. And it's covered in flowers. It's been flowering since December. Didn't mind 31 degrees. None of our cacao got cold and died from the freeze. None of them. And we've planted well over a hundred cacao seed grown trees, two different types. And I'll be happy if 80 of them are really, or not 80, 20 of them survived. Those cacao that drop off one by one sometimes, the seed grown trees, are probably being consumed to feed the trees that are thriving, would be my guess. <clears throat> In a, a wild system, that's how it works. That's why the, to just, all the studies, all this bullshit, or pardon, this the studies that they have and they have their list of plants. It's just like somebody with a list of plants that comes in here and rips out everything and then they can, they can ramble off 10 plants to put down and they kind of don't even mention anything else. They don't mention any plant that grows, grows by itself. They remove it. They either remove it by uh, some sort of side or uh, mulch it out. Vegetable garden's looking good. I'll show you that in a minute. But the other ice cream bean, Inga spectabilis, seed grown, that was from that batch, the other one with the multi seeds planted in, in it. And 
the these small ones that were separated from these pots because I only put one inga in each of the I did remove the other ingas two other ingas from each pot um, the ones that have the se other seeds growing in it and planted together in one hole are outperforming anything else by far any other inga that we planted on this property, they outperform. So here's inga intermedia. And they're like, I guess, 10 inches tall. And this is the, so they're right here. That's, there's like three of them, it looks like. And um, this is it. And it's a pretty healthy tree. And it's growing underneath this oak tree. The old trees, they like to colonize with, seems like, one species of grass. And we get sunlight here in the deep forest because we're kind of close to the ocean and there's nobody to the east of us. So as soon as the sun comes up, it shines. It's really bright in here. So that's why the cover does so good. Sun shines right in here. I'm sure once all these plants grow up, that'll, that'll be the end of that. And that, we'll see what happens. But for now, that's what grows in here. This uh, black sapote didn't set any fruit, but it's flowered again, so. Hopefully it'll set some fruit this time. So I'm gonna show you our biggest Inga Spectabilis. And uh, I did that tree not in our biodynamic compost. I think back then I was buying bagged organic potting soil, which is inferior to your own compost. I'm gonna go not where the sun is because here's those cacao from this year. They do good here. Cacao is, it seems kind of easy here. It's, uh, and I, you know, the, the, all the multi trees in one pot I've been doing with other stuff. So here's a cacao and Adamoya. There's a little Adamoya down there. And there's the cacao. Adamoya or giant mulche. Anyway. I think that's what was in there. I think I removed the Adamoya from there because because it uh, is a little wetter there. So this is, I'm starting vegetables here. So in um, the end of July, middle of the end of July, I start prepping for vegetables. So this area has always been a monocrop lawn and it's kind of got compaction issues and the achacha here just hasn't been growing. This banana hasn't been growing. So I'm doing vegetables in here. So I do that and then I, um, before I plant, I mix more rosy manure into the soil. That's what we're gonna do. So this other Inga was also from seed from, it's a Santal. Santal doesn't mind uh, 31 degrees. None of our Santal got, got frozen. So. So where people get their seeds, where are they get in their seeds? You know, I see all these pop-up uh, seed people in strange places and 
Like none of them are growing their own, growing their own uh, plants. They couldn't be. Maybe they are. I mean, what what are they growing them in? They don't tell you. That's this is part of the part of the thing where they don't tell you what you know. They discard this and they don't tell you how they grow. Well, some of them do, and it's kind of scary and bad for the environment. And then people do that and they put it in their ground. They do their they do the nursery system in the ground. So this is the Inga spectabilis. It's a freaking gorgeous tree. It didn't really like the 31 degrees, but it didn't die back at all. And this tree has been in the ground for from seed three years, but I didn't biologically inoc inoculate the seeds. I, uh, I didn't really know how to grow them back then, but I do now. And the soil is, you know, very good under it. They're gorgeous trees. There's a soursop back there. Anyway, this is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm talking about our Inga spectabilis trees and other Inga trees and how we grow them here organically, naturally for Florida and your health. Have a good day.